Episode story number eight, Niffle and the Dreamweaver. Niffle stands in his cavern, filled with thousands of dream bottles containing dreams. The shadow entity is now gone, but will be back. And so Niffle teleports to the nightmares locked away in the trunk, down below in his basement. His eyes filled with determination and a hint of desperation. He quickly opens the trunk, checking on the dark bottles inside, then slamming the lid shut. Locks it, and he knows now they are safe, but not for long. Our nightmares are safe for now, but the entity will be back soon. Niffle must think of a plan. Niffle has no idea what he should do, or how he will resolve the hungry shadow entity. However, he is soon distracted by a faint chiming sound. His ears perk up, and he knows what he has to do, but he doesn't have the time, but he is in service to others on the earth plane. Oh no, not now. Someone's calling for that dream. But who could it be? Must help. He scurries over to his large ancient dream book of records, flips through the pages anxiously to locate the records and where the bottle is kept. Let's see here. Um, mm, uh, ah, yes, here we go. Uh, yes, Mr. Mark Silver. He needs help remembering his dreams deeply. Such a mystical man. Niffle locates his dream bottle which was calling to him, grabs it under his arm, takes a quick look at the basement and sighs, <sighs> and clicks his fingers to teleport to Mr. Silver's bedroom. Where are you, little dream? Don't be hiding now. Niffle doesn't have long. Niffle is here to help. We're going to turn you into a big dream for you to remember. Niffle locates Mr. Silver, runs over to his bedside, uncorks his dream bottle, and lets his dream flood into his mind. After watching him relax into the dream, he absorbs some of the new current dream energy into the bottle, seals it, and jumps down from the bed. Now to get back to the cavern before it's too late. I have work to do. Niffle is just about to click his fingers to teleport back to the cavern when he feels a vibration building up in the room. Oh. A portal is about to open up. Niffle runs over to the curtains, which are almost touching the floor, and hides behind them, his tiny hands and fingers grabbing onto the curtain as his large, dark eyes peer through the side of the heavy, thick fabric as he watches the centre of the room collapse on itself as a wormhole appears. <sighs> what is that? Suddenly, a little man in purple dungarees, wearing a black top hat, goggles, and shiny black boots, appears, the portal beneath his feet pulsating gently with purple energy as it calms down from wherever he travelled from. Ah, oh, the magic of nightfall! The perfect time for a wee bit of dream weaving! Now let's see what dreams need manifesting for tonight. As the little stranger says, as he reads his pocket watch, he looks up to the bed of Mr. Silver, raises his cane, taps it on the floor, and teleports to the top of the bed in a flash. Niffle's mouth drops in disbelief. Oh, a night goblin. The little man gets close to Mr. Silver, puts on his goggles, and takes a handful of gold dust, and sprinkles it all over Mr. Silver. He then takes his cane and ignites the gold dust, which makes the whole room glow bright. Ah, uh, my eyes! Niffle turns his head away from the bright glow of the dream space, now emanating from the bed area. He can't quite see what is happening because of the brightness, so he walks out from behind the curtain, his hands blocking his eyes, squinting as he walks slowly towards the scene. Well, there you go. Travel, my friend. May your dreams take you to lands of wonder and joy. Remember, the dreams we weave at night become the seeds of your waking desires. Niffle teleports to the top of the wardrobe to see a wider view of the bedroom, only to see Mr. Silver's etheric body now exiting his physical body, the brightness of the dream now diminishing, and there stands the little goblin man, proud, his tiny body now projecting his shadow onto the dream floor behind him from the moon from the window. What is this? What is going on? A night goblin? Yeah? What is this? The bedroom returns to its normal dark ambience as Mr. Silver's etheric body now transcends beyond his body and beyond the bedroom and goes through the walls as the little goblin man slowly turns his head and body to watch it leave. What have you done? Niffle cries out, pointing his finger at the little mysterious man on the bed. Why, hello there up there, my friend. How may I help you? The little man looks up at the wardrobe, takes his hat off, and waves to Niffle. What have you done to Mr. Silver? Oh, not the bloody, my friend. He's gone travelling, but he'll be all right. Travelling? To where? 
Did you kill him? You know, Niffle, I'm glad we're neighbours. Our talents complement each other very well. You know my name? Niffle, confused, clicks his fingers and teleports to the bedroom floor to look up at the large bed. The little goblin man, shorter than Niffle, waddles to the edge of the bed to look down to see him. The moonlight from the window still making the little man mysterious. Niffle looks upset and anxious. I'll be right there. The little goblin man taps his cane and teleports to the bedroom floor to meet Niffle face to face. There, in front of him, he tips his hat and plays with his beard and moustache, twitching in satisfaction as he greets Niffle. I'm married at your service, of course. Without your help, I wouldn't be able to transform dreams into out-of-body experiences. And without you, my help, you wouldn't be able to have experiences to capture. Our world goes hand in hand. Without each other, dreams and astral projection wouldn't exist for humans. So you're a helper, a friend? Aye, since the beginning, my friend. Since the beginning. What was that gold dust you used? Mead smiles curiously and puts his arms on his waist, feeling proud. You help humans remember their dreams. I transform their dreams into experiences. With the use of the astral dust, with a little sprinkle here and a touch of manifestation energy, I amplify their dreams so they can project and have real-time experiences beyond their body. Mead opens his little pouch and shows Niffle the astral dust, sparking with magic and manifestation. Niffle sneezes. <coughs> this astral dust can transform anything into a more beautiful experience with the help of my cane. And with that thought, Niffle's eyes widen. He now sees hope. He reaches out his hand and shakes Mead's hand. Will you help me? The dreams need your help. The dream world needs saving from hungry nightmare eaters. As the two shake hands and unite, they both smile at each other. Aye, certainly, me dear Niffle. Certainly, there's a sudden harmony in our collaboration. Dream keeping and dream weaving is a delicate art, you know. And having you around makes it all that more magical. We need your help. There's a dark entity shadow wanting to feed on nightmares. And we need to save them from the dreamers. Niffle's battle with the dark entity is far from over. What will he do to protect the dreams from the encroaching darkness? The answer lies in the hours yet to come.